Oi, oi. Hello and welcome to Fairy House Easter Festival weekend preview. I'm joined by the legend that is Jamie Wren. Can't believe this is our first video post Cheltenham. We did so much stuff up you know, like in the build up for that. Feels a bit weird to be back down doing another one. I don't really know what I'm doing, to be honest with you. But Jamie, you're here to hold my hand. We've got some good, good racing this weekend. I think Fairy House is an underrated bit of a festival. There are three days racing. And as much as Cheltenham gets bad press for having four days of it, how they manage to milk three days of racing at this festival i don't know i suppose it's good for the day outright but the quality isn't the best on every single day in every single race we're going to go through day by day i will look at it race by race jamie but there's plenty that i want to skip to if there's anything you fancy any of those we'll stop to go through them but um other than that we'll give our thoughts on saturday sunday and monday we've only just got the entries coming out for the, the monday stuff but i got a good feel for that there's going to be a few betting opportunities, I reckon. But obviously, at the point of us recording this, we don't know final declarations. You'll see as we go through it, there's a few that are doubly entered. But we'll steer you in the right sort of direction for it. And, I mean, who fucking knows? If I'm having a good bet this weekend, I might do another All My Bets video to be kind. Jamie, before we go into it, how the devil are you? Cheltenham's over. Do you feel happy, glad, sad? Did you have a good week? And how's the golf and drinking been going? <laughs> Golf and drinking is fine, yeah. Great. Great to be back. Thank God. Uh, great week, Dave. Brilliant. Uh, a lot of anti-post bets came up for me, and I was happy. Uh, the one you texted me, it was my best, really. It was a protector out of Tarpon on own for him for a while. Uh, Maz, bro, was a nice bet. I backed him anti-post. Limerick Lace, another one. So at the end of the week, most of my anti-post bets were still alive, and I was happy. Um... The one I suppose I was a little bit bitter about, not bitter, but I didn't back him each week. I backed him to win at 20 to 1 to win the bumper. That was Romeo Coolio. I thought he looked the winner all the way around, and I just thought, nah, I wasn't even looking at Patrick Mullins. But they're too, that bumper, because of the potential I said before that Romeo Coolio will be a good horse, that yeah, I reckon that's a good bumper for some reason or another. They look a nice bunch. And uh, look, it was good to see Gordon Yellick maybe he'd come up with two horses to take on William Williams next year with Jalan Dudery and Romeo Coolio. But sure, um, that was it, really. It was a good week, can't complain. Um, not sad, no, glad it's over. <laughs> right with you. It's, it's mad, isn't it? It's like it's, it isn't, it's definitely not anticlimactic because it's a, it's a mad, mad week. I think I felt a little bit of extra pressure this year. That I'm not 100% sure why, but like it was one of those. It's like yeah, every year it gets the same. I think it's just worth us mentioning this, I guess, for the fact that guys out there that will do something differently, especially if they're doing anti-post betting or they put their neck on the line with a few bits, it's like semi-uncomfortable at times, isn't it? But it's it's good to obviously watch it. We put the hard work in. We're gonna, we should be fine with it. We stagger the approach across like multiple horses and stuff across the week. Like we know how to make money at Cheltenham, which is why we do most of the years. But yeah, it is one of those. It's almost a relief. It's over. But we've got Fairy House coming up. Aintree will be in a couple of weeks as well, and then we'll be getting more and more excited. A couple more weeks until Punchers Town, and then we'll be crying because it's over, won't we? We'll be fully stuck into the flat. But this is this is the perfect little, um, I don't know, I want to say like palate cleanser going into those big festivals because there's some very good racing that's here, but there are still some proper bets to be had at Aintree, proper bets to be had at Punchers Town. So in lieu of us not doing anything for a little while now, this is a lovely little segue before some content comes out. We'll be giving you our views for all three days at Aintree, and I will definitely be doing all my bets videos for that. I'm going to pull out a special little one-off piece for the Grand National. I don't think it will be massively applicable to lots of you out there, but give it a watch. Um, and then for Punchers Town as well, we'll definitely be back to smash that and then see what we do for the rest of the season. Anyway, Jamie, let's, let's go through the card. I'm going to put it up on the screen. There's very few markets that have been priced, so call me lazy. I'm not going to go onto the odds comparison stuff for any of these because even the ones that have been priced, let's just leave it out. I think on the Saturday that we're looking at here, the first four races probably I'm not fussed by. So are you happy if we skip the Maiden Hurdle, the Hunter's Chase, the Mayor's Amateur Women's Rider Race and all that and get on with a 4.30, I think was the first one I like the look of? Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Yeah. So this is, this is an interesting one. I'll let you have the, the wheel on this one. I, we, I I feel like I don't need to say it all the time, but I love saying it all the time. I love three-mile hurdles. I know it's like the most frowned-upon division within National Hunt Race. Everyone seems to fucking hate it. And yes, we're not going to see the absolute creme de la creme type horses in there. We see that this season even with the stairs hurdle. 
But I like these types of races, right? There's some nice types in here. Lachlan's in here. Um, obviously, form with beating Stella Story looks real good now. The fact that that's one an hour at Barn. 142 is his Irish mark. Willie Mullins also chucks in. What path? Me. Olympic man and Lombron as well. A couple worth mentioning, I think, from close up. And they are all doubly entered, though. There's another potential race they could go into. So I'm, at the moment, probably going to wait on this race until final declarations come out and find out who's going to run in it. Because I, I mean, it sounds really lazy to say it. I think Lombron's got lots of ability, just hasn't quite really put it all together yet. But 128's criminally like offensively rating him. But then you do have to be careful with Willie Mullins' horses that are rated below my lovely threshold of 135 because it might just be they're a bit wrong for some reason. Olympic Man, I think, looks like he's quite good, but he's entitled to be fairly impressive last time out. Second run after a little while, and then he's seven-year-old, isn't he? But Lachlan, I liked this horse from earlier on in the season anyway. 142 is probably a high enough mark and there is another option for him later but of of those three Lachlan, Olympic Man, Lombron maybe I'm being an idiot Jamie but I would be happy to bet any one of those three as long as all three of them weren't in here really is there anything away from Clare Sutton's that you like the look of or was it one of them that drew you in? No you, you exactly said the way I was looking at the race to say Dave um, <clears throat> I'll go on potential here and I think because if you look at the, I think it's the dam side or something like that, on an Olympic man, he's related to a French two mile chaser, but he's he's uh, related to another horse called aforementioned who was could win between two miles and three miles. They 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 got this horse and they were touting this horse terrible year year or two ago for a Martin Pipe, uh, kind of a, like a gallop in the champ kind of route, but it never worked out for him and he got injured or something like that, and then he came back. And then he ran in the, towards the back end of a Galway festival on the Sunday. And he was beaten by enfranchised over two miles. Then he ran at Galway again, I think in October, he was two miles. Then he stepped up the trip the last time, beat a horse called Donchalant, who doesn't like winning up races, but he hosed up by 15 lengths. But I just think he's crying out for another step up and trip because he looks slow as a boat to me. And look, because he's well touted. He's recorded of an RPR of 150. I mean, like, if he's getting in off 131, he surely went in on this. And uh, I think they're just being moved nicely, softly, softly, but I'm mean, looking for a big day. And I think this is the day. If he doesn't win here, look out from a punch down. But because he skipped Cheltenham Day, that's what I like about these races. I, I kind of nearly dismiss every horse that's gone to Cheltenham in a way, uh, depending on their campaign. Uh, but no, if he runs here, Olympic man for me, you know, I like it. The one I've definitely got to mention, and I don't want to spend too much time talking about certain races, we don't know where the runners are going to be, but built by Ballymore, right, was obviously smashed up for the Coral Cup. 4-1 to favourite if you sent off. First time he was wearing cheek pieces that went alongside his traditional tongue tie. He was shit for no other, no other way to really say it. But if you look at him historically, a couple of people messaged me because Paul talked about him on our preview. We went to Toast Obviously, we banged out loads of winners in there. He got smashed from the price. Then, like, he was 20s at the free when we talk about him. So, value loser. We all love one of them, didn't we? But a few people messaged me on the side and were saying, this horse has to go right-handed. And I went back and watched a few of his races. And I can't, other than, like, if you look at his actual form, I couldn't see enough in it to think, actually, like, I don't know. Sometimes you see they, they travel a certain way or they hang or that sort of stuff. I couldn't see anything in it to think it was, like, substantiated. But he, I, I would, I would fully say that for him going forward now. So if you look at Punchestown, he's run prior. That was decent. Limerick's right-handed. Even his couple of runs before that, Nace, in Maiden Hurdley, was well battered by Stade still, but that's going the wrong way. Nace, he was battered in that bumper when he was like, short enough rise. And even at Leopardstown, he was battered in that bumper by Deep Cave, or Maiden Hurdle first him up, sorry. But Punchestown, he was second in April. So I wonder if right-handed, he's a bit more interested now. So if he runs here, I know, like you said, they're about ignoring the Cheltenham he ones, but... Do you reckon he's just going to make them like he like do you think, he like he'd have to be short, wouldn't he? So, but I don't I don't know yeah. what to do with him. I don't know if I could. Uh, yeah, or... I, I would disagree with you. Yeah, because I think he's stepping up for another, right up for another step up and trip. He looks at he's a fine big horse, Dave. He's going to be some chaser, which I don't know for nothing. Um, I reckon they might wait to punch down for him. I don't know why. I think just give him it like. Brazil would like he could run him here. He could fall out the back of the television, then come back then for a two and a half mile love or handicap or something at, at punches down. Yeah. I'd be just wary of him backing him after Cheltenham, and then there could be something at punches down that he might be only just having a trot around. I can't see him running after how bad he was at the Carl Cup, but as you said about that hanging, 
Uh, but he's definitely one to keep an eye out for the future. But there could be a big handicap left in him. They might go in now because they know the heavy ground's coming in Ferry House, and they might not be yeah. by uh, like that's way the they be thinking. Do you know what I mean? Because the, it's been raining here heavy, like so. Yeah, so I, I, guess, I couldn't I guess, couldn't put you off and be rain, right? Yeah. Well, that's it. I, I, I suppose we're probably as much as much we talked about the class and horses. If built by Ballymore here ran, we would probably be a little bit worried, I guess. Wouldn't we maybe it's not going to put me off betting the other ones because, like you say, they, you think they'd save a punch down or something, but it, there's plenty of better opportunities to bet in there, innit? And I know we haven't mentioned him, and I know loads, loads, loads of people will get excited about him, but this is a 30,000 euro prize pot in it. And if you think this horse is well handicapped to be four to one favorite for a Coral Cup, he's still well handicapped. I can't imagine they'd waste the dart winning this but who knows maybe they will maybe they think they can win this and go and win at, um at punch town as well but yeah it's step up and trip for a minute and yeah I, I i still think the willy horses have done enough to suggest off their marks and at the trip they would be competitive anyway we spent far too long on that it's my fault for going into too much detail the um handicap hurdle that comes off this two mile listed race there'll be loads of good names in here by Ali stock i did like him for cheltenham but He's very much ground dependent. I have thought similarly of absurd as well. Like we backed both of them anti post, didn't we? I think you were maybe mm. a tiny bit worried about the ground being too slow for him at the end of the day. But fuck me, was he a good thing? And you touted him from a long time out. It's good to see Daddy Longlegs in handicap company because remember how everyone was saying he's going to win a supreme. One hundred and thirty-five on him. Like he is filthily handicapped. But that run after he won his debut and then was well touted, he was dog shit in the ground and I can't see how he would be able to perform in this so maybe another one I'd, be, I'd, I'd have an eye on him for a handicap when he runs but I couldn't back him on shit ground so the, this race I, I would be the ones that interest me basically even Westport Cove I think that horse has got ability off his mark I don't want any of them in this bad ground so I haven't got a strong opinion in here can you do any better have you got a bet in here if they bought run as I said Dave here if they bought run right I have it. I had it down when I looked to it. It's Mr. Giff, obviously, a fun for I think he's better than that. Uh, with, with like with more experience there in the Supreme, like we were getting at at the preview, myself and Paul were kind of small but strong and we need to pay for a Supreme because of the we call it the so called weakness of that Supreme. But you look back at it now, it doesn't look the weakest of all time Supremes because Mr. Gilpar looks like a champion hurdle nurse. Uh, mm-hmm. Slade Steel will be a fine chaser. Um, so will Firefox. Uh, I can't remember who's fourth, uh, but he was fifth. He's a good jumper, a very good jumper. Like he's an experienced shot in the in the Supreme coming down the hill. But here off one four run, he's surely better than all these. I just think so anyway. He's just better. Than, he's going to be smashing too much chairs for next year. Um, I wouldn't put off anybody. He's I think 50, 66 to one for an article. I really like this horse. Something about him. Uh, is he quite good enough for an article now at this stage? I think he's right step in the dark, but I think he's a fantastic jumper, and I can't wait to see more of our fans. Uh, the other horse that I like is one last tango. I backed him in at Christmas, he won at Christmas. He's been a horse called By Your Side, and By Your Side was, was well back for the two mile handicap hurling on Sunday at the Dublin Race Festival. Now, I will say that to all the horses that ran in the county, it was the one that was so Scottish and all them. They finished ahead of him in that, and so Scottish was shite in the in the, in the county hurling would say that. But just watch back the race, and a couple of mates of mine were talking about him one last tangle. And if you watch back the race, Mark Walsh was on him that day, and we couldn't believe he wasn't on Zenta, and he, we couldn't believe he was on so Scottish. If you go back and watch that race, he didn't try a yard, an absolute yard, and we thought he was going to go to a county in our heads. Whatever, regardless of absurd in the head, anyway. But we thought this is was their county horse, and he never got entered. And I think if they come back here, he won that day off one two two. He was one three one the last day in Leopardstown. He got dropped a pound. But I think if Mark Walsh goes for him instead of Risk Better Comfort Zone, just watch it that. And I wouldn't put anyone back. He's definitely going to be an each way price in it, uh, if, especially if Walsh is on it. So if Walsh is on it, I wouldn't put you off. But I think if Mister Giff runs because it's Probably a nice part as a listed handicap. I think he'll just win. Nice. I like it. By any stock, right? If Punchestown comes up good, because I do agree with all you're saying about like, one last tango being decent. Mm. By stock gave him, I think, a stone last April at Punchestown. 
and mm. Bradley Stock here, you can see there's like he's climbing up towards like getting close to one last tango. But I don't think Bradley Stock's gone backwards. I think what, what, probably what do you need? What you need for him, Dave? I said, remember, I said your last preview, or whatever we did. I can't remember. He'll win that same race on the two mile handicap at Punchstown on the first day again. If we have a dry three weeks dry ish, the Punchstown. And I wonder, I wonder, like, like they, I don't think, like, you wouldn't want to be ruining a horse for the sake of it, but even running him at Cheltenham was questionable. I know the ground was, mm. I don't know, not going to be as bad as it would be this weekend at Fairy House. He, if they run him for the sake of running him, they're trying to get his mark down or something. I don't, I don't know what it is. They could, they don't, yeah, they don't even, seem to be shy of running him, do they? If they, if he, even if he falls out the back of the television, he won't be dropped in Ireland. That's the problem. <laughs> no, because they know what's well, going on. Well, yeah. They know what's going on. yeah. But he like needs just, he needs a flat two miles and one in punch down suits him better. Yeah, that's what worries me if they try and save him for Galway in the summer because obviously it is a bit undulating and a bit of a niche type track right. in it. And Willie's had so many like good things for that that go and get beat. I'd rather they just go and win Punchers Town again. He'll be there to Galway hurl, and you think he's the winner all the way around? It's just that he'll kill him. Yeah, agreed. Anyway, hopefully we got our money from a punch time. But this is a fairy house preview. My bad for digressing. So a mare's bumper. Um, I I do like do like bumpers. Do like the girls in there. I think if I was gonna ha like had to for the sake of having a bet in it, because that's what I feel like this race is like. I what I, I sound really rude when I say this, and I probably am being. I don't think any of these are that good. Like I don't think we're looking at. Mayor's novice hurdle winners in this race next year. I could be, I guess, I could be massively wrong. The Magic McColgan looked okay last time, stepped up significantly from the first one, I think. But I would, have, I'd be disappointed if, like, if she was the best in it. But I do think she might be. So it's not a race I think I would possibly bet in because I would imagine she's going to be short enough if she does run. Have you got a better opinion for the viewers out there? I have the winner of this. Oh, is it? Is it Magic McColgan? No. <laughs> okay, well that makes me feel better for the quality of the race at least who should i bet on not gonna be part of hash primrose if you look back at the leperstown race she should have won not should have won i thought she i don't know she was inexperienced and thing got first run flora of brazil and flora mm -hmm. brazil finished seven in the champion bumper won impressively that day if you want go back and watch the race the softer the ground the heavier the ground the the better this mare's chance, but it, she won an absolute bog. It was well towed. It was well back there that day. I think it was like 25s, 33s in the morning in Limerick in the bumper at Christmas. And it got absolutely hammered and it won easy. Then it was third in that list of mares. I don't know. It's a great, it's that's a great too, Jay. Yeah, it's great, great too. too. Yeah. It's yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. And it was beaten 10, 7, 8 lengths by Fleur of Brazil. Now Fleur of Brazil ran very well in the champion bumper. So that's the form. And the softer ground, it's going to be heavy ground. And it's going to be soft, right-handed, like she won at Lep, uh, Limerick. She hung a bit to the right at Epperstown. When you when you watch it back, she'd be better right-handed. She's a good thing. Yes. That's what we want to hear, because typically it's Willie's in the bumper, right? And it's very lazy of people to say that. But in these instances, right, I do like to have a little cut, even though I'm not going to necessarily have a bet in everything. As I say, we haven't spoken about the races before, and I don't know what Jamie's about to say, but when I feel lacklustre, like I say, I'm disappointed if they're going to go and win it. Normally, I wouldn't be accepting a Jonathan Sweeney horse to go and beat a Willie Mullins in a bumper, but looks a winnable bumper for someone else. That's happy days. Probably the best bet of the Saturday, then, by all accounts. Yeah. Yeah, I think she'll win. Yeah. I love putting words in your mouth, mate. I right. think she'll win. <laughs> No, it's, so. it's good. It's very good. We've got we've got some like so there's some better racing, I would say, on the Sunday. Sunday's one of my favorite days of it because I feel like there's some good opportunities to bet, but you have the safety net that there's still some good races to come on Monday, right? If you do mm -hmm. your conquers on the Sunday and then Mondays you're getting outstakes, you could be getting in deeper. So obviously gamble responsibly. Uh maiden hurdle, skip that, or do you got anything you want to mention? No. Good, good work. Don't really, I mean, unless things, I don't know. I don't know why you, why someone will be losing their maiden status there other than the fact of just winning at the fit the uh, particular meeting. Novice handicap heard of the second race, two and a half mile. Was there anything in there you wanted to mention? Do you want to tell us that Redstone will win? No, I got off him. Um, no, there's a horse we, 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 we did like him we did, we did like him before though I, there, I've only said yeah, that not to very, I, was, I, backed him, I backed him the last day he fell yeah I just was disappointed in him 
one, but one, two, five disappointed. No, there's a horse better, better handicap than him. Go on, and it is. Uh, I've been watching this horse for he's ran in a maiden with Predator's Gold at the start of the season. Then he was a hundred to one at Christmas in a, in a maiden one by Jade de Grugy. And then he ran the last day at Punchestown behind Milo Lees. Now it was a sh- it was kind of a worse main hurdle. The third light keeper was beaten the weekend. Faulty came out and won at Down Rail. Milo Lees won the race for William Owens, but it's number 17 packs. Uh, this horse is well handicapped. Uh, I just like that. The three runs, and then if it runs here off a of mark of 114, I think it's been underestimated because of the decent of the company was holding the first two maidens. Then it goes into a shit maiden and then finishes fourth. The three runs then look, you know the you know the book here is gonna say straight away, Dave, this has been well touted. This could end up favourites, do you know what I mean? Like straight away. But it's just a horse to keep an eye out on wherever it runs the next couple of weeks. Just back it, because I think it'll win a big handicap. Just like it's like this is only very low grade stuff, do you know what I mean? But yeah, I like this horse and I think if it runs, I wouldn't put you off back in it each bit. Nice, go on the packs. Mm. And if anyone's going to beat it, it'll be Redstone. But I'm not suggesting. Yeah, of course. Yeah, I say Pat and Redstone win the race. Yeah, yeah, I don't. don't. Right, we're in a we're in a fortunate position, right? Where I moan about it so much, right? I feel like I need to stop whinging so much. But you know, there there's like I think last weekend was it? There was a Grade Two Mayor's Novice Handicap Hurdle. How can a Mayor's Novice Handicap Hurdle be given Grade Two status? I know this is good, right? I don't, I don't, I, I, I don't understand how this is like grade one there's, standard. There's, if, you anyway. bet, if you want to go, if you want to go, if you want to go, Paddy Power and Prizes, right? Can you click the best ads? Can you on, on that? I mean, I, I, I mean, well, the, well, the best does don't load up. You know, I can go to odds comparison. I can get the prices up. But I mean, yeah, yeah anyway, I've had my little rant. It, 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 it annoys me that it's like this is class as a great one. I don't think this is the best mayor's novice hurdle race that we get in the year. However, compared to what oh, yeah. we had at Cheltenham, it looks like it's quite good, right? So we've got the betting up now. So brighter days ahead. Jay de Grugy, it's probably worth. We'll talk about them two together as one mm. little piece because obviously we had the mayor's novice hurdle at Cheltenham. Jatara's in there. She's bound to be popular on multiple, multiple occasions. I don't know why Jesse didn't run her at Cheltenham. Obviously, it turned into a bit of a sprint. It was mad. I know she's earmarked this race, but she's getting overly popular the last couple of times, isn't she? This bioluminescence hasn't really done a lot wrong, to be fair, to her. Bad ground will probably suit. She's a monster price by the look of it. I would imagine she'd be fairly, fairly like well supported. But it's difficult, right? Because like brighter days ahead, I know Gordon talked about it. It's a different type of hype when it's Gordon Elliott Horse compared to Willie Wines, as far as I'm concerned. But he was bullish about her. Uh, I was bemused by the how the race unfolded because I, in my head, I thought Jade de Gruzzi, brighter days ahead, will both go out fairly quick, right? They won't sit off a slow pace. And I, in my head, no way does it turn into a bit of a sprint. And then even when Jack turned in on the home straight, cuts up town end on Jade de Gruzzi, gets himself in a position and still doesn't really push the button just yet for a horse that is a bit of a boaty type. Um, I was still ultimately disappointed that she got beat, I'll be honest. And I know it's really the, the hardest part of all of it was the fact that Dysa Enos wasn't in there. If she'd have been battered by like a Dysa Enos, as much as I've crept her and all that sort of stuff, I, it would have sat a bit easier with me. But the, the, the horse that did win the race, third favourite, right? So he was entitled to be in the mix. Did run well, to be fair to it, but... I don't know. It's it's rather than me looking at the winner thinking the winner's a better horse than I thought beforehand, it's made me genuinely worry about brighter days ahead and Jay DeGruji. So I guess the, the long and the short of all of that, mate, is I liked the idea of Jatara. I don't I'm I think seven and two about her is too short. I don't want to get bitten. Jay DeGruji was terrible at Cheltenham in the grand scheme of all of it, so I couldn't bet with anyone's money. But um Am I being an idiot and looking at the like being harsh on brighter days ahead? Now it's a step up in trip, now it's on bad ground. Am I being harsh on brighter days ahead? And is nine to four like looking a gift horse in the mouse and not taking advantage when she was sent off so short at Cheltenham? Or am I right to be cautious, do you think? Uh, who do you think wins this race ultimately? When I was looking at it at the start, Dave, and I exactly what I said is about the rule that the Chitara didn't go to Cheltenham. And that's who I wanted to back. But when I saw seven to two, I said, geez, it should have been bigger than that. And that's what's put me off. 
Uh, fun, 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 I think, is a two-miler, but shapes like it will stay two and a half. She was impressive the last day at Nace being man's way in Mirasau West. But is she this level? Do you know what I mean? Is she just below this level? Cala Conti's no chance in her. Uh, Jade de Grugy. Now, I agree with most, but most people said about the race. Town and giving an awful ride. Like, it was, that was, like, that was his, look, he had great rides and he had bad ones. And look, every jockey is, you can't, they can't be perfect all the time. But what was he doing down the inside of the track? And in, when, especially in the new track. Do you know what I mean? Uh, she got cut off by uh, Kennedy there at the bend, all right. It will say that. Uh, I just never liked her, Dave. I always said to J.D. Cruz, I just, I don't think she's good enough. But the way they've touted Brighter Days Aid that 94 could be a gift, and I kind of agree with you there, it could be an absolute gift. Uh, I didn't understand when she was pulling at the top of the hill, right? I said, like, she's on, like, Kennedy's on the stair. Just go for home. Do you know what I mean? Like, I know it's easily said it done with the way the ground was, but you could see she was more boaty and the speed of your horse won going next. I mean, like, if Dice Arlenas was in that race, Dice Arlenas would have won the way half the track. Like, the way it's beaten Golden Ace in the entry, Dice Arlenas, like, for, they must be kicking themselves the way how slow the race went. And Dice Arlenas is way faster than all of them and would have won that. It would have been Dice Arlenas and Golden Ace going up the straight. Do you know what I mean? Uh, but maybe because she's more a bow type and she's at her proper trip now, Brighter Days Aid. 94 looks a gift, doesn't it? If, like, I know I'm going against my rule of thumb, being a hypocrite, but the way they've told her, she's surely better than that. Like. The only slight negative, I suppose, she's ran at Nevin and Cheltenham in the space of a month. Do you know what I mean? And this is our third run in, what, nearly six, seven weeks? Like, what a tell it then, but she's had a light campaign, anyway. Yeah. It's, I, I'm, I'm stumped with it, but the, I, I think I do, I do like Jatara, right? And even again, we like the the race they ran her in. Like I know I put her up; she was not running money back, so it was like no harm done, was it? And I know that Jesse had already said she's going to go for the Nathaniel Lacey. Ultimately, she beat Stella Story, didn't she? She wasn't far off for it as Golden mm. Dancing City. And I know mm. they they haven't done much for the form since, but she beat the Albert Bartlett winner fairly comfortably, and she didn't she didn't do herself a disservice there. I know she got obviously got weight from the boys; it was only a few legs going. Like she was definitely in the mix. So you'd think coming back to Girls Company. She's got a chance, isn't she? I'd, I've, I don't know. Yeah, I'm, I'm. It's one of those, isn't it? Right. Not everything is always price driven, but a lot of it will really should be. And in this instance, you look at it and just think, I half wanted brighter days ahead to be like a five to four, six to four poke. So you think, oh, she's too short to bet. Jatara is mm. like a six or seven to one poke, and you back her each way or whatever because she's down bound to be in there. She's won at Fairy House before, isn't she? <laughs> Maybe, maybe I should just go with the one that's and, going to win it. And I, exactly I, what you're saying in the Nathaniel Lacey. Remember halfway down the back straight, she bolted on Rachel Blackmore, like, and she kind of lost the irons a small bit, like, do you know what I mean? And yep. she kind of grabbed on a bit. Like, she's probably better more for the, you know, I know Denton City and Predators go and finish above her that day, but uh, she's probably credited because she's only lost two links at the end, like, do you know what I mean? And she bolted mid-race, yep. so. Yeah, I and would I, put you I, off. And I don't think... think and that's the, that's the painful thing with it because I, I know I know obviously they say that she's a stayer and she wants further, but I I eat, I think of that mayor's novice herd and I just think I think it, in that finish if she she would have been there with brighter days ahead, the winner mm -hmm. and uh, and like herself being there, I think she would have beaten brighter days ahead at Cheltenham over the shorter mm -hmm. trip. So then so then then I'm thinking to myself maybe I'm being an idiot. Here. Is the pace going to change anyway? Spent a long enough talking about it. I, I, for me, in my head, it's between Jatara and Brighter Days Ahead. I think we've similar view on that by the sounds of it then. But Jatara is probably not a ridiculously short price, but I think we, we probably were both trying to hope to get a bit greedy, get a bit of a bigger price. I know she's blue on there, so maybe she did open up bigger and she's been back to whatever, but... Yeah, I don't. Uh, yeah, as much as at Cheltenham, I like to back a couple of horses. I'd, I'd probably, I'd probably just sit this one out because it's the girls, they're novices. I wouldn't want to be bitten again by brighter days ahead. I probably wouldn't want to bet against her unless I was getting a massively juicy prize. So maybe sit it out and wasted twenty minutes talking about a race that I might not have a bet in. But it makes, it's a real good race, isn't it? And, and they're, they're the race. types of horses. They're, they're the types of horses that will help substantiate the form for the season because. Jatara, make no bones about it. She's a very good horse. She's a very good yardstick, as far as I'm concerned, for this level of like running. 
if something like brighter days ahead, or even let's say Jada Cruz does go and win, if something batters her in this race, I would say they're a fucking absolute weapon. But um, it's just that in it. Like I, th- there is there is the chance the brighter days ahead is just a much better horse. But she didn't do it at Cheltenham. But then, like we're saying, maybe that's maybe maybe in hindsight, after she wins, the nine to four about is an absolute fucking steal. Right, this mm. one's been priced up too. Race after is novice hurdle. We talked about some of these horses in other races. Lock Lynn's in here. Olympic Man's in here. I feel like Lombron is in it somewhere else as well, but not in this one. So this is two mile four, grade two novices hurdle. No flies on him. Obviously ran behind Tully someone. Ran behind, ran, behind, ran behind Tully Hill. He was bet. He was barely really put into the race. It was a. It was a bit of a bizarre piece, wasn't it? But mm-hmm. he wasn't, as far as I'm concerned, he wasn't there to win that day. I think they know he's level with him. I, I I did look at this race, did do this race, and thought that this horse would be in and around this sort of price. So I think I think he'll win the race, and I just think he's the right sort of price. I don't know. I don't know whether I'd want to bet him. I think he's a bit of an overhyped, overbet horse. Probably on what he's done, he should be about a three or four to one poke. But you could see him being the price that he is. So I'm, I'm boring on this. I, th- I think he'll win, but I definitely won't be betting him at that price. What about you? Do you like the race? No, I didn't look at I like I didn't like it. Sorry, I didn't, I didn't look at it. I didn't really like it. I think like as you say, like by default, he's favourite. And I think he's like seven to four is Warfel. He should be like two, five to two. Like Tully Hill bombed out at, 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 in the Supreme. He beat uh the ill fated DP Cooper in a in a maiden hurdle at Leperstown. And like obviously he needs a step up and trip. You could see that, but does it really? Do you know what I mean? Uh, the only other horse I like when I was looking at it is a horse that I kind of like for the Nathaniel Lacey, but it was a bit too far and it was never put into the race. But I wanted two and a half mile maiden at the Ferry House, and it was I Will Be Bay. Uh, I really like this horse yeah. at the last day, and it was when it beat my trump card. My trump card then went on to beat Dr. Eggman in a race at Nevin. Uh, I think it's back to its proper trip here, two and a half miles, and back right handed, and it was seriously impressive that day, and it's eight to one. So I couldn't put anyone off by having a saver on him against uh, No Flies and him, and I will be bet. Yeah, fair enough. And that's the key thing, right? When we've got these horses that probably are short enough based on what they can do, it does mean that there's other horses in behind that will be a bigger price. I do wonder if no flies on him as well. I, I That ride the last day, maybe he was trying his best and he's just not that good a horse, but it makes me feel semi-uncomfortable that like this is a grade two, as much as it might not be the strongest grade two. If they were pissing about with him, they'll piss about with him again in this, wouldn't they? So I think it's a brave yeah. man that would want to bet him at seven to four, because it's not really like you could steam into him and then chase again next time out. I'd probably rather let him run, hopefully mm-hmm. get beat, and then if he runs in a handicap off of any sort of mark, sounds ridiculous to say that. I wouldn't have a number in my head, but I, I'd be interested in him first time in a handicap more than I would in a grade two here, I reckon. Um, we've got the Marquis Novices Hurdle, another grade two that comes after this. Uh, Daddy Long Legs, we, again, we talked about some horses that are mentioned in multiple types of races. I'm, I, I really do think Daddy Longlegs is much, much, much better than 135, but I, cu- I couldn't possibly ever back him on shit ground. Western Diego had some decent bumper perform, didn't he? Starting to put a little bit now. Mirrors All West was obviously at one point. Everyone saying he was going to win a Supreme. So again, it looks it looks like an okay race, right? It is a Grade Two in name. It's not the deepest of race. Was there anything in here that you want to have a bet on? Well. Obviously, back right-handed. I think they'll never go left-handed with him again in Mirasol West. But like I saw the price seven to four is absolutely ridiculous. But I just think I just think he can't go left-handed. It's just me. I don't know he won his bumper at Nice, but he hosed up in a maiden hurl at Punchstown, or I think it was Punchstown, beating the ill-defeated DB Cooper that day. And he still wasn't home that day, Dave. I don't know. There's something right. I don't know what it is. I I'd be taking him on all day anyway. Uh, the one I like here is at five to one, and it's another way. It's just a like he was actually in that maiden hurl at Christmas behind um, No Flies and him. Uh, then he came out and he won a maiden hurl at Punchstown. He absolutely hosed up, but it's just what the RPR you recorded, and, and it was one five four. This is when this race, even with Mirasa West bombing out in races, Came from France, like, do you know what I mean? So, this it doesn't care about the ground. So, I think I would put anybody off back in another way. 
and Lane Mirror Southwest because I think Mirror Southwest is an absolute dog. Nice. I like that as well because another way when he came from France, he had it was close to five hundred days. I think he had off. Um, yeah. And it, and. And then, and obviously did get beat by that no flies on him, and I think that's another part of it where where people were like, oh, that no flies on him is beating some really nice horses in there, but it mm -hmm. is one of those that I feel like when they come up against each other again, they do they do him in, and I yeah. do think this horse is is a proper nice two miler as well. Yeah, it, it was what I think it was one four four the RPR. I just clicked on it there to have a look at it, which is a mega number in the grand scheme of a Grade Two bit. So mm -hmm. yeah, I had I hadn't looked at this one deep enough to think about having a bet, but I'd like definitely yeah, I, I would. I don't. I mean, it, I guess it depends if they both run, doesn't it? I'd imagine they. I hope they would. But if they both ran, there's another way. And Mirrors or West shouldn't be any worse than joint favourites. And I'd probably, I'd be the mm -hmm. same as you, mate. I'd go another way. Let's get in. One of these, though, right? With this short-term anti-post, it obviously it depends if we've got any confirmation or we know they're going to come here, or if the price is juicy enough. And my personal vibe with Fairy House is always I'll wait. I'll wait till final declarations because in those instances there, it might be that those horses are the price they are because they might not be going there. Someone might know more than we do, but fuck me, if he's five to one on the day, Jamie, you've talked me into a bet. Right. Uh, all sorts of races going on after the not talk, handicap. I'll talk, I'll talk you into another, I'll talk you into another bit here. I, know. <laughs> I, I, I don't think you need to. I think I know it is. We, we could probably do, if I say three, two, one, we hold our fingers up for the number this horse is. I Go think on, this shit. This shit's home in here. So I'll do one, two, yeah. three, we'll do our fingers up. So one, two, three. Four? Oh, yeah. okay. All right, you might be better than me. The only, the only reason why I say this King of Purrs or however we're supposed to say it about him is I've I know I know he was terrible at Cheltenham right in that in the Grand Annual, but I still just think being in that kind of race is better than what this is, right? And some of the races run early. When he got beat by first blow earlier in the season as well, I looked at all that sort of stuff and just thought, like, this, this is going to be very strong, good, uh, like, experience for him at some point, right? I, 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 you know what? I didn't think long-term. and didn't think, oh, he's going to be in a novice's handicap chase. But this is a pretty weak novice's handicap chase. And I say it's weak, right? He's basically qualified because of the fact that they haven't won a number of like chases from a certain time and stuff. But it's because they're novices, right? He's got in his he's number two. We talked in there like he's off nearly off the like away from the top part of the weight. Like he's he's almost the best horses in the race in here. Those horses that are in behind, they wouldn't be able to go a yard with someone like a first flow. And I know he's handicapped to go with him there, and I know he, he blew up a bit at Cheltenham. I think he's that experience is enough to see him go very 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 well in here. So. Don't know what sort of price he'd be. I would I would want a bit of a price him to be fair. Like I don't I don't know how big. I haven't done a tissue type thing, but just gut feel from the early parts is if he wasn't five to one or bigger, I would just fully let him go. But that was more the the, the race from the early in the season, right? I was waiting for him to be in a little shitty race, and I think this is a bit of a shitty race. But Cadathala, is that how we're saying it? Cadaharla. Is, is it is it is Cole Murphy? Is that his name? That's it, Colin Murphy. And you, I mean, this is another one of his that you're liking for this weekend. Go on. Oh, 30 lengths behind Corbett's Cross, 32 lengths behind. Ah, there the you go. Oh, hey. 123. It will, yeah, and it's it's last hurdle. Mark is 128. I mean, like, this horse will be favourite. There's no doubt. And like, this will go to stupid favourite, I think. Fairness to Joe. It's ran three times over fences. But it's going back to the first time we rode, ran over the fences. Corbett's Cross, Shetland Festival, Three Card Break, Boat, uh, Monty Star, second in our, our uh, Browns, Nick Rocket, favour for the Irish National, Amy Deshi has won a maiden chase at Gorham Park, and then there's Cotta Harda. I was actually at Nace that year, last year, Dave, Dave Lauder's day, and I backed him in him. Not to 105 or 110 novice handicap hurl and it absolutely hosed up. Uh I said the three great runs out the back of the telly in, in uh beginner chases. And it's like it's running a good one, a good one, then a crap one. So yeah, this horse will not be beaten. But a hard All right, okay. Well you, you probably do make a very strong case, but <laughs> 
at least I'll get a price on the King of Pearls. This yeah, is yeah. how I say about my I say about my snobbiness tonight. Sub one three five is my bucket of. They're probably <laughs> yeah. just not doing. It. They're not saying they can't do it. They're just maybe choosing not to. But I mean, yeah, a bit of an oversight for me there. But you know what it's like, right? When you get to this, I guess this level of horse, you have bigger mm -hmm. aspirations for some of them earlier in the season. And if they don't quite hit that, you still know they've got the ability. I mean, I hope he is short, short, and I mean, I hope he wins for you because I'm sure you'll get stuck in whatever the price is. But I'll have a little bit on the King of Pearls, and it depends how many runs, right? We've only got ten that have been entered. I would mm. imagine they'd all run because there isn't many opportunities for this type of race, this type of standard on a big weekend. So hopefully there's still enough terms so that I can be a pussy and back King of Pearls each way. But um, yeah, I'm still sticking with it. You're not, you've not put me off enough. I will respect though. That if that horse, well, I'll look, I'll get my alerts popping me up when the uh, market opens. If that horse opens up at any sort of price, I'll back it purely for, you know, you can hold the stake and decide what to do with it after because, yeah, probably will go short, right? Right, we've got the Willow Warm Gold Cup chase, a grade one. Mm -hmm. hey, I mean, it's not it's not a vintage grade one, is it? I think this is the standard of horse racing, just full stop, right? I know the British side of it gets massive stick, full stop, but. I just, you know what it's like. I say about competitiveness is what breeds the better quality horses. Mm -hmm. I think that it's just the nature. Either side of the sea, right, we would all agree that this probably isn't a vintage potential grade one. But maybe I'm being harsh. Maybe I'm just in a moany, moany mood for the rest of my life, right? Um, Zana here, Matar are my two big price each way ones in the Turners and Arkle, respectively. Both fucking come fourth, don't they? <laughs> Little shit guns. So they obviously don't turn me in for any place money. Um, I, I I do still like Zanny. I do think he's got a lot of ability. I don't, I don't know what I would do in this race is the, the long and the short of it. It's, it's, it's just one of those, right, where I feel like I could look at it and I could probably make a case and probably find a bet. But I, I you know, when you just instinctively look at a race and just think, fuck it, I don't want to play in it because... I probably can't really work this out. And you might get lucky and you might work it out, but yeah, bollocks. I, I don't want to have a bet in this race. St. Felician was a bit unlucky at Cheltenham being brought down, but yeah, probably wasn't going to go anywhere anyway. Found a 50 round his race, didn't he? And you'd think this is probably an easier race than the Arkle with the fact that there's no Gaelic warrior he's got to go and beat, but are they going to step him up in trip or not? Who knows? Blood Destiny semi-interested, isn't he? But yeah, I... I Regardless of what anyone says, this is where like a little bit of discipline will come in. I may look, I may look a gift horse in the mouth and miss a real good thing in here, but I don't believe I am. I think we know enough about all these horses. I'm not going to have a bet in the race, but do you think you will? I will. Yeah. Oh, God, Jamie, I love the thing is I love it as well because I love how much I've said oh, you couldn't talk me into a bet. Give me a bet, Jamie. I'm going in. Oh, I think Splans Tower is a good thing. Ah. Absolute good thing. Um, tactical no, move is not good enough. St. Felicien is not good enough. I know it was brought down. Um, Elete Tomp is a Leperstown horse. Uh, found a 50. Couldn't beat I at Maximus in a Drimmer. Doesn't stay. I think he's like a 2-2 two -two horse. Really found a 50. He's not a 2.5 winner. Mm -hmm. Flank and move is not good enough. The rest of no. It's between Blood Destiny and Spillane's Tower. Put that with you. Blood Destiny to me is a two miler. Was was getting seven pound from Splans Tower in a listed race at Punchestown. Is that great? No, it was the Great Three. I couldn't beat Splans Tower, given it. Now they're off level weight. I know it beat Splans Tower the last day at Navin in the Webster. Was it the Webster Cup? Was it? No, it wasn't the Webster Cup. It was some other whatever race, right? It wasn't. No, it was. Oh, I can't remember the name of the horse. Another famous horse was Navis Hurl. Flying Bolt or whatever. Uh, but. It's because of the way turnaround, Dave, and that it's beat, like, it looked like that day of Punchestown that Blood Destiny didn't steal it out and Splans Towers saw it out better. I think, off level weights now, Splans Towers is an absolute good thing. I feel, I, feel, I mean, I 100% I see it. Hmm. Just go back and watch the race at, at Punchestown. Yeah, I'll stick with discipline, but yeah, you're, I mean, you're probably on right now. I don't want it. I don't, yeah, it's want, just, I don't want. I don't want to bet this one. I hope you're right. It, it, if you if you went back you are, to that race, I think it's the flying board. Yeah, flying board at Nevin. Yeah, just go back, ball, watch yeah. the race. Tom got his own his own way in front. It was over two miles. He's just a speedier horse than Splendid Star. But now over a staying trip on heavy ground in the Grade One, draft level weight. Splendid Star has to win. 
I like it. All right, fuck it. I might bet. I don't. I don't like anything that says bumper. Don't like anything. Move on to move on yeah, to same. Irish national day. Right. Let's get on to the Monday. Let's try and. I mean, let's, let's try and keep it short. We might better keep it within an hour. So there's um, we've had the confirmations of like for the Irish national day, the ones that stayed in, and then we've had the entries for the rest of it. There's bits and pieces on the um racing sites that don't get updated. So the couple of races we'll look at. There are. They're not necessarily conditions, but the weights are not calculated and listed. But I think I've worked them out. So I'll mention them as we do. Anything in the novices handicap hurdle to kick off with? No, I, I juvenile. Juvenile is the next one. The juvenile. We love a juvie, didn't we? Right. I did I did spend a bit of time on this. I know how much you hate her. If Carla Conti runs in this, I give her a pro proper chance. But mm -hmm. that's all I, that's all I'll say. So I know you hate her. <laughs> I'm the winner of this too. That's all I've got. I'm the winner of this too. Go two. on. Butler's no. secret. No, Butler's secret. And the oh, reason I behind it. Well, at least I know who this game is. It's, the, it's, this, it's just the way it won, I thought it was. Like, I thought they would go to the triumph, Dave, and it would have had a, like, they would have had a bit of a chance in that triumph, and put it that way, Joe. Uh, I just he really impressed me at Nace the last day. Probably beat nothing. But Batman Jarak, nah. Like like Hannah Conti, she's something like she, it's like the old rule of thumb, Dave. It's like Joe you know, people when they tip Nurburgring to the win the triumph, right? They started for me too early in the season, if you know what I mean. I'm not yeah, cribbing them, they're yeah. decent horses. I think Hannah Conti started too early in the season. I think she's kind of got to her ceiling. Um but I think on potential, yeah, I think this, especially now that the ground's going to say soft to heavy. Potential-wise, I think this is an absolute really good horse, and I hope he's good. So, yeah, I'm going to take a stab in the dark, and I think this Butler Secret will win that. Isn't it? Nice. So key with this stuff as well, because it's not a grade one, obviously, again, the weight stuff that haven't been published within it yet. Carla Conti has won a grade two, so will carry six pounds. So as much as the Phillies get seven pounds. She's actually only get, going to get one pound from Bottler Secret because Bottler Secret just won an ordinary. Mm. I don't know, was, it, was it great? Uh, grade three that he won. Right. So, no. So, he'll get three pounds chucked on then. So, yeah. So, he'll be four pounds better off. No, three, three pounds better off than he would be if it was a grade one, basically, with her. So, mm. yeah, it does make a bit of a difference, doesn't it? Yeah. I'll be, yeah. It wouldn't be a wouldn't be a like particularly strong bet in raising there. I I, st I still do like Carla Conti though, so I'm just being an idiot. Um, uh, two mile six handicap hurdle. If you've got a bet in this, then I'll be very surprised. But have you got one? No, I don't. Sorry, no. We will have on Sunday when we speak. You'd have told me you found a good thing in there. Sometimes there are those types of races, isn't there, where something does pop out. Right, so we've got another grade two here. These are the ones I have done the. I think I think I've done the revised weight bits on just because they're a bit better class. Like these are good grade twos, I think is fair to say. I think there's plenty of horses that can run in the 150s. Um, Ashdale Bob, a steering for launch, Beacon Edge, probably got at the game. Ollie Murphy might send 11 year old brewing up a storm over here. What a waste of a uh, folk trip that'd be. Maxim's in here, no looking back. Sir Gerhard, the devil's coachman, Zarat the Brave. So basically, since the 1st of October 2022, if you've won a number of races or a certain stature of race, grade threes, grade twos, or grade ones, you carry varying penalties. Like I say, it's not listed on the race post at the moment. Everyone else will look at it later and closer to the time. But I think I've got it worked out. Right? I think Ashdale Bob will be 11 3, Sir Gerhard, and the devil's coach will be 11 3 as well. So no penalty for any of them. Asterian Falange, I think, will carry 11.8. Uh, Zarat the Brave, I think, will carry 11.6. So, Sir Gerhard doesn't stay. I see people put him up for the stairs hurdle as well. Like, I, do, I definitely sure. think that was a, 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 good, a good air of everyone. Did we say it all year? We said it all Me and you said it all year. He doesn't stay. And people still put oh, him up no. for the, the stairs hurdle. And he met. But I, but I, but I, I do think, because obviously, like, I'm not, not, this, is, not, this is not me saying it for like an half time thing, but. If if I hadn't have backed Tia Poo at the start of the season when I did, I know I talked to him lots of previews, even building up when he was like three to one and stuff, saying like I still think he's a good bet. So I would have got stuck into him. But I think if you if you got closer to the day, the fact that he got smashed into like a five to four poke, and for all that I thought he was an absolute good thing, I didn't I never thought he was like should be I mean I probably did think he was a five to four poke, but I just mean I can see why people would look for stuff. But Sir Gerhard back to a middle trip, 
we're saying there from my, my revised figures, which don't hold me to account, but I'm probably am right. How the fuck do some of these horses give Sir Gerhard weight? Like, surely they will run him here. They gave him an easy enough time in that stairs hurdle. Mm. Sir Gerhard wins doing handstands or not? All wins, by no problem. And the campaign as well, they fell over fences, came back after a break. They knew they didn't stay in the stairs, so they look after him. So, yeah, just wins. Happy. I mean, I, I love, I just, I it's love just, it. It's, I love the fact just, that that's such a simple one to do in it. I don't, I. It's back in its optimum trip. <laughs> that's his trip. Yeah. It, and, it's, it's, and he's probably great. Say, he's probably, a very good horse, but he's, he's, he's. Yeah. That's his level now. Do you know what I mean? That's his level now. Yeah, well, and that and that's it. He's not good enough to be a two mark. He's he's not. He's, it's not. He's not the same because Super Sunday was better. But he's he's like a bit like a Super Sunday type horse, and he that yeah. they will try him at the at the two miles or the three miles because they're the more prestigious races. But ultimately, mm -hmm. you're a, unfortunately you're a two and a half miler, and there's not enough grade ones for you. I know there's Aintree and options there, but let's be honest. If you went to Aintree and running the two and a half miler, when there might be like a Constitution Hill there, he's fucking beaten out of sight. And he's so it's, it's his level. I guess these are the times to put the hammer down on some, isn't they? Is, is there is there any worries with trusting him or anything like that, or would you just be happy to bet him and he, he should just win, so he wins? He just win. <laughs> okay. Oh, the only reason I mentioned that right is because of the next race because it's a similar type, I guess. Okay. Um, yeah. Slightly different weights, so the chase is carrying eleven four as the bottom rather than eleven three, but it's the same kind of credentials. So the way I worked this out was uh, appreciate it. And Phil Dorr stay on 11 4. Um, Astrid Meadow, easy game, and Saint Sam will carry 11 10. And Journey with Me will be 11 7. The ones that I haven't mentioned, I don't think I've got a fucking chance anyway. So, bollocks to him. Really harsh, very brutal person, right? But it was worth me doing that because obviously we've got numbers sat in front of us there. Easy game and Saint Sam are the 160s horses, and I'm doing in inverted commas because they are they, they they have shown it at times. Whether you could trust to do it or not, I don't really know. Easy Game is a very good horse, right? Even though he's a ten year old, he's a very good ten year old, but he's going to have to give some weight away to appreciate it. I, I half didn't want appreciate it to be getting some weight, right? I'd rather look at it and think, oh, he has won a race, or he would get a penalty in there because then it puts you off. But him in receipt of weight makes me feel like appreciate it might might be the bet. But I'm a little bit worried about him right-handed. I know he won a Punchestown bumper, but he's been beaten here a couple of times, I think. Yee. And even that fast or slow run, right? That was right-handed, patch it road. It was quite a good run, but he did get beat. And I know he got beat by fast or slow, so maybe it was good. So, yeah, I feel like I'm falling on appreciated. But you know when you fall on them just because of the weight concession stuff and we talk about class of horses? Oh. I think at the, at the point I'm saying it now, right, I feel like I probably, if someone said to me, who do you think is going to win it? I'd probably say appreciate it. But there's a part of me that wants to be able to make a strong enough case for easy game and bet him, even though he's got to give weight away. I would be, I'd be reluctant to be anywhere near St. Sam because anytime he's in an actual horse race and there's other horses around him, he doesn't want to do it. So as much as he's a good horse, there's good horses in this race. Also. So I massive line through St. Sam. I would have it between easy game and appreciate. And I, I would, I don't know. I, it's, we have to see how it prices up. I'd imagine appreciate it and as easy game. There would be much between the market. Oh my! I don't I mean I don't need to give a selection. Fuck it, easy game. Fuck it, easy game wins it. After all that said, Jamie, who wins this race? Are you more convinced than I am? You got some more conviction? When I first looked at them, we obviously there was the one race we chatted about before we started. Um, Ashtree Meadow won that Webster Cup last day, and the only thing I will say that I could understand the gamble on journey with me that day after a, a huge break, uh, and obviously a ground like Ashtree Meadow is more good ground dependent, but it was like he he heavy run at Navin, but it just got its own way out in front, and Rachel kind of looked there after journey with me after that. Same Sam, how was that horse, the 163 horse? I never know, winning soft races. Same with Easy Game, like, how are they in the 160s? Just think about it literally. Like, I know they're decent grade two horses, but as you said, when they come into a proper horse race, they'll be found out. And I totally agree. Like, if appreciated, like, exactly what you're saying, 11 stone four, like, with the form of um, John Durkin beating Farsley. But the only thing is, I know what you're saying, David, like, 
he was trying for his life in that in that train more where fast or slow, like they were surprised at one and Gallopin was even trying that day. Do you know what I mean? So that's the one slight where they went up to three miles and they never won like in the gold cup at Christmas and doesn't stay at three miles. And then he was poor enough, wasn't he, at, uh, in the race won by Ello and the horse and jockey at Turley. So yep. he hasn't won for a while. Do you know what I mean? That's what's putting you everybody off. But if he kind of is kind of gone at the game and the way that journey with me has potential to be better than his mark and the ground is perfect for him, it's the way he was back the last day in the Webster Cup that defeat was out of the question and actually made a one race. Hopefully there's, there's no so-called dread bounce factor after a long break. I think he's the only danger to pre and I wouldn't put you off at going against pre with a journey with me. Fair enough. So we're in a similar disposition then. We respect appreciate charts. I yeah. think it's obvious there for you all to see. But there's yeah. a there's a lingering question mark about him in there. That that yeah. race, but that was his first 160 RPR over fences in that Dirk and when he got beat. Mm -hmm. That's the that's the thing that worries me with journey with me. Because I, I do see it, right? Even when you go back, like almost beat impervious, did beat Limerick Lace. There are bits of form and stuff that's sitting in that are quite nice, but he's never actually put up a figure that Done it. It. But, but but he has got the potential to be better than his mark, and he and he will be. I don't like you say he was very well supported. He will most likely, when the market opens up, be a much bigger price than easy game mm -hmm. that I'd put, take on appreciate. So I think the long and the short of it is we both. I would probably expect appreciate to be short enough, don't we? We're maybe not maybe not necessarily favourite, but he'll be short enough. But we want to take him on. I'm taking him on with easy game. I fucking love easy game. Might be my mm -hmm. last time to bet him, and you're taking him on with journey with me. Let's yeah. go. Right. The Irish Grand National. I have done a piece for Gigi, so you can go click that if you want. Uh, talks about trends. Uh, Whittles it down to a few, to be fair. Um, so like, they are semi-interesting, right? Trends are there to be broken. It, it, yeah. They're, they're probably looser trends you could use on this race than other races, right? Purely, purely for the fact that this is a very profile-driven race anyway. So there's just like almost the majority of the field tick 90% of the boxes, basically. Um, Nick Rocket, I just, I know he, he pissed up at Fairy House last year, didn't he? Was it in his hurdle uh, race, right, right? And I know he's been on the back burner for a lot of people this season, talking about him as like a, I don't know, just, just all sorts of type of horse for the season, like a Brown Advisor or a National One Chasey type horse. I, 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 he's he's just one of these horses, right? I'm more than happy to be completely and utterly fucking wrong. I do not get it at all. I don't. I know he was behind five behind Corbett's Cross, and that looks good now. And he wasn't far behind American Mike. I I don't look at him and just think one four six yeah. in a big competitive handicap like this, first time at three miles. I don't see him warrant him being favourite. So I am very 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 keen to take him on. Both intense raffles and heart or dark second and third in have very proper chances but we've had like three weird and didn't one this didn't it 150 we've had 40 to one winners we've had 50 to one winners we've had <laughs> lots of bigger price ones so the ones that came out on the little stats bits which would be as much of an interest that i want to have in this one was where it all began ticked lots of boxes but he that's shortened up a lot now which moves it off of a, a, a box where it all began was on the short list daily present was on there as well and where's frankie so I think if like if I was going to have a play in this race, I would probably just look at chucking 10, 20 quid, split it across the three of them, and then just enjoy the race. But have you got a more bullish opinion? Because there's horses like Yeah Man in here that I feel like I should want to smash into him, but then I look at it and think it's an Irish get Grand National in it. Like you don't get like wide margin winners of this race. It's always really ultra competitive, and I I don't know. I seem to get it wrong a lot. Jamie, you've probably got a better record than me in this race, even though there's been those big price winners. Is Nick Rocket a worthy favourite? Does he win, or does something else beat him? He's favourite did on the company that he's kept and the way he was touted for Cheltenham. And I think they've realised that you know, he's, he's better gone right-handed than he is left-handed because he was woeful at Nav in the last day. He was mm -hmm. up the very side of the track, and he was trying to jump into the ditch. So I think he he's better right-handed, but 7 2 4 one in Irish National. It's poof. It's three and a half miles. Anything can, can happen. It's three. It's four to one to get over the first. Uh, it's like the, the English national. Come on, like uh, no, I wouldn't like if he was seven eight to one. I'd be all over him. Yeah, yeah there'd be no doubt about that. 
Uh, but the horse I like, and look, I was going back in him as a saver for Kim Muir, and as I said to everyone, like, you know, go back and watch that two might, and a half might handicap the double race of us, and, uh, and just watch the way I know the way you're thinking finished. Good time Johnny finished. And the English handicapper tried to give him £10. So the English handicapper had him at one four two. The Irish handicapper has him one three two. So work it out for yourself. Uh, and not being smart about it, just go and just watch that race. Like, the horse has been messing around all year, do nothing, but they say he can't jump. But then the day that he, he'll put it all together is, I think, will be on Monday. I think 16 to 1. I don't think he'd be that price day, to be honest with you, on the off. I really don't. People, I think, are going to latch on to him. He's 9 stone 13 and heavy ground. He jumped okay at the Dublin Race Festival of my book. Philip Enright just pushed him up. Uh, they looked for the mark for Cheltenham. He was going to the Kim Yard. They gave him the £10, obviously, and they said, not. Nah, we go for an Irish National. Now, the two horses I had in my head, but one was Parcival de Galois, who's not running, and Good Time Johnny. And I said, no, nah, I have to go with Good Time Johnny. There's a huge handicap in him. He's with a an owner who had previous Cheltenham Festival winners. He's a Cheltenham Festival winner. And they're looking for the big day. And I'm hoping on Monday it's the big day. And I'm, I'm on at 16s. I'm happy. I think he'll go off shorter, and I think he'll win. Nice. nice and it's key with these as well because like it's it's a relatively big field handicap right there's five places up for grabs in places there's four places in other ones it's a fifth of the odds and a quarter of the odds so it's re it's relatively the same sort of value obviously if you want to be a bit more cautious you take the five places there's, there's one part one sorry they've got the grass there's one more point of it he has a pretends final winner he's used to being buried in a big field and that's what i want i've wanted it yeah. all year for him he's been what in stupid three, four, five runner beginner chases this year? That doesn't suit him. He needs pace. There's not going to be huge pace because of the ground and his three and a half miles. But he likes to be buried in a big field. Like he's going, like he's going to even trade bigger and running probably because he'd probably be out the back of the telly. But if they if the place collapses up top, I can't see him beating. I don't know what it is. I just don't know what it is. I just this does a huge like thing happening. And I think you are right. Like I th he is one. Like, he definitely looks like an obvious shortener. Like you said, yeah. with Nick Rocket being as short as he is, though, there's only so short they can get right. But I'd imagine good time Johnny goes off single figures for this race. That's yeah. why the only reason I mentioned the place termy stuff. As much as you might get a fifth of the odds for a quarter, of the uh, fifth, five places for uh, a quarter of the odds, or you might get an extended sixth place, someone like that with a bookie, his price will shorten up. So if you want to bet him. Bet him now would be the uh, advice on that. And then choose whichever concession you want. If it was me doing it, there's a quarter of the odds for the first four, there's a fifth of the odds for the first five, and I was looking to bet it each way, I would just go for the longer places personally, especially when you know they're going to shorten because you're not really giving up so much of the value. Right, handicap chase after. Anything there you like? Uh, I'm taking a bit of my thing is going to put not here. Free wheeling Dylan's in there. Free wheeling Dylan. <laughs> I don't think I have anything for that. One second. Now, if something stood out to me, Ellie will tell you straight away. No, I do fancy something in the bumper. Though. All right. Well, I, th this bumper, I didn't get myself as far as looking at because I skimmed the entries first thing and I thought I don't want to dive into it because there's two things that I knew. I knew about the runners that I liked in this race. And I don't need to look at it any further. I don't need to reconfirm it, right? Redemption Day is a dog. He's an absolute hound. He gives it away, throws it up. So I, I can't have him in the slightest. And Patter Merchant is a horse that I think is slightly underrated. So with the fact that the two of them are now paired in a race together, like if Redemption Day was in this race on his own, I'd want to lay him. If Pat if Pat a Merchant was in this race without Redemption Day, I'd want to bet Pat a Merchant. The fact that Pat a Merchant is in a race with Redemption Day means I'm getting the best of both worlds. I'm going to get a good price on Pat a Merchant, and I'm tempted to, like, relatively steam in. Like, if for me, like, this would be the sort of one I might have 50 on or something like that. Like, I'd never go heavy, heavy in the bumpers. But Pat a Merchant shits on. I can tell by your reaction. You agree, right? Oh, without a doubt. Absolute. Good thing altogether. And like this one, exactly. We want Redemption Day in this race because he'll like we'll get a better price. Um and I hope Redemption Day runs because he's gonna be a stupid favourite. Uh Pat Merchant <coughs> won at Christmas, beat Sounds Victorious. Everybody in the dogs in the street saw the way Sounds Victorious bombed up to Cheltenham Middle and finished forward in the champion bumper. And they, it turned into a sprint on the inside corner of the track of Leopardstown. This horse is supposed to be a stair. 
and it was a sprint from all the bend all the way up to the straight, and he beat that sounds victorious for speed. Uh, he really impressed me that day in Leperstown, and I was hoping that he'd run in a champion pump route, but they obviously they waited for the later spring festivals. This horse is an absolute good thing. Good thing. I'd be Agreed. shocked if he beat. Agreed. One thing I will say about him is I love to just bring Brick and Castle into everything, but like a Brick and Castle, right, I think this pattern merch is the same constitution of dodgy as him, right? Like, I don't think he'll ever win by flash margins. I think he always looks right. like a little bit in reserve, but, it, but he could have his heart broken if something goes in, in head. Mm -hmm. I think it works even better in this instance because Redemption Day won't won't go past him. So Pat and Merchant no. will just be in by short. I think it's I think it's the perfect storm for Pat mm -hmm. Merchant. We'll have to we'll have to hope, right? Because I can imagine that everyone else will think the same, even bookies agreed. So I wouldn't want to bet him short, short, but I'm hoping with this being a nice enough race, Willie could have a couple of other ones that might run in here as well. I'm hoping to be getting I don't know. Again, I haven't done the race properly, but the gut feel would be like I'm hoping to get north of five to two about him. And I feel like he would go off shorter. So I'd be wanting to bet him at that. If he was sub two to one, I would probably be happy to just fucking sort of let him go. But we want the redemption days and then we want the Coco Masterpiece to get a bit of a price. We'll give Pat a merchant a go. Right. Let's wrap it up because we've been on it for way, way, way too long. We've got bed to get to. Really appreciate your time for this, Jamie, and all your support throughout the season. We'll be back for the Aintree stuff, so we'll keep it fairly quiet before then. But, um, yeah, any last words for the viewers? Best bet of the weekend or anything else from anywhere else you want to mention? Uh, best bet of the whole weekend? That caught a hard on that novice handicap chase that we said, yeah. Oh, my God. Okay, I don't really have a best bet for Fairy House. I'll be sensible on it. But as I said at the start, if anyone's still watching now, if I have some good bets this weekend, I'll do an all my bets video. If I'm just leaving it on the day and just betting like a mug punter, then I won't necessarily share it in that because as much as I'd like to have a little bet and i like to share it with you guys, if I'm not really going in with conviction, I don't want to share it. Anyway, we're done. I'm going to wrap it up now. Thanks again, Jamie, and I will see you all again very soon.